another week, more cannon fodder. As if the title wasn't enough, this week's going to give us a look at some of the armor featured in the upcoming Infinity's Armory update later this month. So, let's dive in. Starting us out is an armor set that you should recognize if you've kept up to date with some of the more recent issues, either here or on Waypoint, Atlas. Atlas suits are heavy, over-engineered tactical assault armors that excel in high-threat boarding actions and urban assaults. When its modular add-on and weapon modules enter production, it will serve as the Spartan equivalent of a main battle tank. The Atlas is built to make war in the harshest environments against the most implacable of humanity's foes. The Atlas's sensors are an iteration of those used in the Gen 1 Mark VI, emphasizing absolute reliability and ruggedness over the latest technology. So damn, the Spartan equivalent of a main battle tank? I'd love to see a campaign that really takes advantage of that notion. Anyway, next up is an armor that can only be unlocked by completing Spartan Company commendations, Achilles. Only Spartans who have mastered themselves, bound their wrath and passion with a shell of hyper-dense steel fueled by starfire, are granted access to the Achilles. Lesser warriors would lose themselves in a storm of blood. The AI that lies within the branching lattice of Achilles' neural interface gnaws at the mind of its partner. No Spartan can stand alone against its urges of unbridled access, but through bonds of loyalty and duty, they can be held at bay. So, some interesting references to the legend of Achilles, binding wrath and passion, for example, and this notion of an AI that lies within the Achilles' neural interface, gnawing at the mind of its user, which, again, would seem to reference the great rage of the legendary Achilles himself. Halo universe-wise, I'm interested to know what sort of AI this is and why it would be part of the system. Again, I'd love to see a game or for this set of armor perhaps just a story that details this a little more. The final set of armor included with Infinity's Armory but not detailed in this cannon fodder article is a set called Mark V Alpha, seen here. Besides the qualifier, you can clearly see that it's fairly distinct from the version seen in Halo Reach, Halo CEA, and Halo 4. Interestingly though, it's actually in many ways much more similar to the classic depiction from the original Halo CE, more so than any of the other aforementioned depictions. It'd be interesting to read about why. Anyway, the final section today is a question from the community. The question asks about the various versions of the Mantis that can be found in Warzone. To keep it short, the variants are used in a variety of environments and for varying purposes. As an example, Grim directs us to the Liang Dortmund variant. It can be fielded as part of Liang Dortmund's security or as purpose-built, non-combat variants to aid in colony reclamation efforts. And after a teaser at more Infinity's Armory information next week, we close the main article and come to the universe entries. This week we have Nomos II or Genesis and the various incarnations of the Covenant Wraith. Genesis, also known as Nomos II, is an artificial world that builds seed worlds. These are constructed by mining moons brought to the installation, though by 2558 only two remain. Using the resources from said moons, Genesis creates the seed worlds with a variety of flora and fauna for civilizations that need them. Forerunners were known to relocate species and civilizations if they saw the need to, so I can't help but wonder if Genesis, or similar installations, were utilized as part of these efforts. Anyway, as we know from Halo 5, Genesis is home to what is known as a Domain Gateway, a critical one, as the article notes. Interestingly, it was placed on Genesis to hide its energy output. I can't help but wonder why. Further, the gateway is apparently largely unknown to Forerunner civilization. I wonder if perhaps, in some way not yet clear, the gateway had at least some direct connection to the Precursors. I know Precursor artifacts are susceptible to the Halo Array, but perhaps whatever Forerunner tech is on Genesis shielded this hypothetical piece of Precursor tech. I don't know, I'm just putting ideas out there. Anyway, the gateway closed when the domain was seemingly destroyed following the activation of the Halos. However, when Cortana found her way into the domain in 2557, she found that it was slowly repairing itself. From there, we all know the story. The second article today is an update to the Wraith article. Nothing all that new if you've played Halo games or kept up with cannon fodder. The Wraith comes in three major variants. The T-26, the variant seen in most Halo games. The T-52, the AA Wraith and the new T-58 seen in Halo 5 that features designs and technology that wouldn't have made the San Shayum very happy. I'm somewhat surprised there aren't T-26 A, B, and C variants, considering how much the T-26 changed between Halo CE, Halo 2, and Halo 3, but perhaps that's for another day. Anyway, that wraps up Cannon Fodder for this week. A fairly good article as always, and I do hope we get to learn more about Genesis and these domain gateways soon. Until next time, this has been Halo Cannon. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you liked this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up, subscribing, and sharing it around. 
You are the reason I get to keep doing this. So thank you. Profusely thank you. If you want to dive deeper into Halo's lore, head over to the Halo Archive. It's a lore-based community that welcomes everyone from experts to rookies. No matter what your working knowledge, you'll be sure to find a friend and a good time.